The Clinton campaign is enjoying a major fundraising advantage and cushion in many polls. And now they're looking down ballot, trying to turn the Senate and the House in their favor as they begin to look ahead to governing. Clinton was in Ohio, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina over the weekend, critical swing states for her, and home to pivotal Senate races as well. And while there, she devoted real estate in her speeches to the Democrats trying to unseat <coughs> Republican in, uh, incumbents. Take a listen. I want to thank Governor Ted Strickland, our candidate for the United States Senate. Elect Roy Cooper, your next governor. Send Deborah Ross to the United States Senate. Send Katie McGinty on behalf of Pennsylvania to the United States Senate. She's running against someone who refuses to stand up to Donald Trump. Pat Toomey heard Donald Trump insult a grieving Gold Star family who lost their son in Iraq. He heard Donald Trump insult African Americans, POWs. How much does he have to hear or to see? I mean, really, it's just, it's too easy at this point. I mean, the, there's so much damage done to the party and to these candidates. The Washington Post reports her campaign is sending out field staff and her campaign is spending $1 million in Indiana and Missouri on the home stretch, many to pick up Democratic seats there as well. And she's not the only one. Politico reports this year the president will back about 150 candidates across 20 states for state level races, including robocalls, social media posts, mailers, and photos of Obama with the candidates. And he has been aggressive on the trail. At a fundraiser last night, he slammed powerful Congressman Darrell Issa, who is locked in a tight re-election battle. With a nod to Democratic challenger Doug Applegate in the audience, the president said, quote, I think somebody called Darrell Issa Trump before Trump. And here he is campaigning with Democratic Senate candidate Catherine Cortez Masto yesterday in Nevada, targeting her opponent, Joe Heck. You can make her the first ever Latina to serve in the United States Senate. Just a few weeks ago, her, her opponent was supporting Donald Trump, who was bragging about actions that qualify as sexual assault. Catherine's been a national leader in the fight against sex trafficking of teenage girls and violence against women and passed laws to make sure the penalties are tougher for predators, expanded sex offender registries, gave victims the right to sue their captors, and the other guy supporting Donald Trump. What the heck? What the heck? Heck no! Heck no! Heck no! Now, I, I understand Joe Heck now wishes he never said those things about Donald Trump. But they're on tape. Yeah. They're on the record. Yeah. And now that Trump's poll numbers are cratering, suddenly he says, well, I, 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 no, I don't want I, I don't, I'm not supporting him. Too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. I mean, did somebody need to explain this to them? Compare that to two years ago when a vulnerable Senate Democrats up for re-election said things like this about President Obama. If he wants to come up there and learn about Alaska, bring it on. I think I'll, I'll drag him around. <laughs> I'll show him whatever he wants to see. But I want to convince him and show him that some of his policies are not the right direction. There's as much distance between you and the president now as between here and Alaska. Just uh -huh. want to say after that answer. Former presidential candidate Mike Huckabee took, took to Twitter yesterday to give his opinion, quote, if GOP loses Senate, it's not because candidates ran with Donald Trump, because they ran from him. No time for wimps and wusses. So Michael Steele That's has the worry that Republicans have to have, I think. I, I agree with my, my old pal, uh, Mr. Ginsburg, but at the same time, to your point earlier, if there's a narrow loss, the best thing for Hillary Clinton is a big win because she can say she has a mandate to do the things she wants. And frankly, the body politic holds together. A close win is the worst. Close win for is the worst thing for Republicans because I, I can thing. easily imagine, yeah. to your point, him calling for the resignation of these guys. And that yeah. tweet right there from Mike Huckabee becoming the mantra for that wing of the Republican Party that Nick talked about, that, that constituent that supported him early yeah. on in this campaign. If it's he being close, Trump. it's ravaging. Uh, Michael Steele, your view on Trump has evolved? Uh, can, you, can you confirm? 
Well, yeah, yeah, no. Look, I said from the very beginning, I have, I did not endorse in the primary. I did not endorse in the general. Uh, I've said that I would support the nominee of the party. But there came a point in the last few weeks where the conversation, in my view, particularly with women, uh, and then finally, you know, the decision that would not support uh, the, the winner, if it were Hillary Clinton, that, mm -hmm. you know, he'd support himself, but not the process of how we close out an election, was just a bridge too far for me. I mean, undermining the, the core of who we are as Americans, when you go through this process, you know, the combatants go to the center of the ring, they shake hands, and, and everyone rallies around the victor. And this idea that that may not happen to me is offensive, I know, to a lot of Americans, especially to me. And, you know, I think, I think my but, party's but better Michael, than that. And I, I think that our candidates should be better than that. This is hard. And um, I say this with complete respect and civility <laughs> because I don't, you know, we could all, like, jump on you right now and be like, what? No, you why? can't. Why can't, you know, why couldn't what it are you going to jump on me for? Well, because I, I there were I have so not many. In anything, I, I have not come out and endorsed any, anything that Donald Trump has said. I've given analysis. I've stayed above it as much as I could. But now I'm at a point, you know, where supporting the nominee is difficult. I mean, I'm about the win. I'm a party guy. We had this conversation before, Mika. Yeah. You know, it's about the party winning. I don't think Hillary Clinton would be a good president for this country, period. But our nominee has problems that <laughs> are hard to overcome at this point. Yeah, but th those weren't apparent, uh, I guess, in in the beginning. And I, I, you know, I wonder if I'm on my high horse here a little bit from just my point of bit. view. Okay, <laughs> it's possible. Um, but it just seems like you know, with statements every step of the way should have had you running. Wh why? I mean, it's not just about the state. I mean, look, I've, we've had this conversation before, uh, Mika. Yeah, Donald Trump has said and done things, but as the point that was made earlier, that, you know, there, this was a process that unfolded over time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were, I mean, you and Joe had nice things to say about Donald Trump at some point in this campaign as well. So, no, this we has had been nice an evolutionary process. No, we had nice things to say about process. his ability to win and about the people following him. We, we thought it could happen. Well, what, th thinking something could happen and something actually happened and the election is not over yet, we'll see where this ends up, I mean, are two different things. And again, this is a battle over, over winning. This isn't about, oh, gee, the other guy's so bad, we're just going to capitulate and give the race to, to the other candidate. That's not how this works. Okay. I will tell you, you will not find a, a frame of video where we say he th we think he should be president and we think he is fit or we think his views are perfect and I, I mean, no we've one, been incredibly no, I, critical. I've but never we said that. that. No one potential. said his views are perfect. And but, you don't have to say his views are perfect to think he can win. No, I, I'm, but what I'm saying is people like you, former head of the Republican uh, RNC and you right. have Paul Ryan who's Speaker of the House or Mitch McConnell these are leaders when you're looking at a person and you're saying what qualifies what makes this person a leader what at any moment during Donald Trump's candidacy made you think he could lead that well, his views the voters were that voted for him made thought he could lead and the party officials uh, have to recognize that and honor that I mean you you cannot have the party officials looking at the voters who voted for him in massive numbers during mm -hmm. the primary and say well you guys are ignorant you don't know what you're doing we're yeah. going to go in a different direction we saw what happened when, we, when the party did that in 19 in 2009 in this uh, 23rd congressional race up in New York York, yeah. where party officials decide to handpick the nominee of the party. Yeah. It led to great fissures uh, within the party and the Tea Party and a whole bunch of other things. So this, I mean, it's one thing to sit back and, and say, this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. It is something very different when, when the party of officials have to pay attention to what the people are doing. Right. He got 14 million votes, the I most votes, votes of any Republican in the history of the party. You just can't throw that away and go, well, that was dumb. Ben? Republicans see this as sort of a schizophrenic campaign, I think. This started off with the promise of, I'm a disruptor, things need to be disrupted. I'm the candidate in the vehicle to do that, with a bunch of policies that went behind that, whether it was trade or income inequality or foreign entanglements. 
Every time there has been a policy burst which rallied people to it, there was also a counter message that kind of stepped on the substantive message. Whether it was his 100 day speech in which he started talking about suing women, or at the third debate, which, which he had to. a pretty good debate, but it, it got washed over by the notion of I'm not going to accept the election. Always results. stepping on his own headline. Yeah, right coming out of both conventions when you needed to be strong with the policy differences in the disruptor versus establishment came the cons. He right. talked about the Miss Universe as opposed to the, the policies. And that's the frustrating part. And from the point of view of the leaders of the Republican Party that you're talking about, you have broad coalitions in which there are some members who are right. who feel a great well, appeal look, for the populist message and some who don't. I think Trump has really revealed an age-old cleavage in politics, which is do leaders lead or do they follow the votes, right? Is, is the voters the party or is the party elite the party? Who decides who is the party? And what's been vexing and troublesome for GOP elites in this election is Trump has redefined who the party is and what it stands for. And they are all caught. And I don't know how that, that wasn't line. seen. I mean, these were really, this wasn't like he said kind of nebulous things that were sort of dog whistles and sort of tucked into. I mean, this was a guy who was blatantly did not stand for. Uh, yeah, but they're for politicians, what, right? They're politicians and they want to see how far they can get without pissing off half of their electorate, right? But, but in fairness to Republicans, remember, right. the Republican elites tried their hardest to stop this guy. I mean, they, 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 were, they were trying to, I'm, look, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm kind of happy right. with the outcome, don't get me wrong, but in, <laughs> well, fairness to, uh, in fairness to the Republican uh, machine, and to Michael still, Michael was the former chairman of the party. I, I, know. I admire him at this point for saying what, what he's saying. But at the same time, they tried mightily to stop this guy. And we sat on this set and commented on it. So I, I take you at your word but at the, at, at, and, and believe, right. uh, Mr. Ginsburg, but at the same time, uh, we are where we are. And there's no doubt, you raise a point, Democrats are going to have to deal with this on our side with the, a populism that has risen. But I got to tell you, I'd much rather have my hand right. <laughs> winning the presidency than having the other hand having lost the presidency and having to reconcile Handle things. After, yeah. after Donald Trump loss. Well, we have a lot more to get to. Still ahead on Morning Joe, the drip, drip, drip of WikiLeaks continues. More emails revealed from a top Clinton campaign operative. We'll also be joined by New York Times columnist Frank Bruni. He's here with his new piece. The last words, Lawrence O'Donnell and NBC's Hallie Jackson, live from Battleground, Florida. Plus, with all this talk of contested elections, we're joined by Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. It's a big, big get. Yeah.